Well, welcome to the rewatch party. We have a special slew of guests to talk things over about that special run in 2003. My job here is to just uh, talk a little and stay out of the way. I'm sure you uh, know, but our, our distinguished uh, panel going from, uh, I guess, uh, counterclockwise, we have Chris Colhorse, Gridman. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, let me wave with my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jorgensen, how are you? Ah, uh, doing great. Yeah. Um, Enrique Cruz, former broadcast partner, do it all businessman. How are you, Enrique? I'm doing fantastic. I don't have my ring on, but I got my nice background going on. So there's a target on my back. There you go. <laughs> He's been the most mobile of the guys so far. Yeah. yeah. You better book. <laughs> and I, I feel bad calling him Paul because I know him as Coach Yanish, but uh, Coach Yanish, how are you? Yeah, people are doing well. Yeah. And uh, the great Philip Umber. Philip, where does the world find you now with that massive flex behind you, that great photo? In Tyler, Texas, man. God's country. So this is, this is what this is well, what it looks like. I mean, the rest of the house isn't really decorated. We moved in like six months ago, so but I made sure <laughs> – the photo you got the important thing going yeah um, your priorities are in order <laughs> all right stop yeah let's uh, start by what, what's everybody up to now we know obviously uh coach Yanish in his way in this world but uh what, what's everybody else going up to now who's starting grip man nope i lost grip man oh there he is, oh, there he is. Man. all right i'll start hey i'm in finance i work at brookfield i'm a portfolio manager uh, energy finance. Well, commercial real estate sales and leasing, which is lots of fun right now. Um, lots of people uh, looking to invest in commercial real estate. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I have to go back. Most importantly, I'm a father of three wonderful children and a husband to a wonderful wife. Whew. That, that's what I should have said first, right? By the way. By the way. By the way. By the way. It seems to be like someone sent you a text message on that. Computer. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Enrique, what, what's in your world now? Coaching? Uh, yeah, so, so here's the uh, now I'm going to take uh, my steps from Batman down there, which is Jeff Jorgensen. Um, I want to say uh, yes. Uh, right now, I'm a, you know, a husband, a father to an awesome 20 month old that's, uh, you know, running around, climbing on everything back here. So I've got like a little like, you know, jungle, you know, gym action kind of here like exploratory stuff i got bags i got i got golf thing i got a baseball i got a t-net and all that stuff so i got that going on right now but uh corporate sales for the houston astros which obviously you know as we all know we're all on pause the astros are uh mlb is not the season stopped right now but um you know hopefully we'll, we'll get that going sooner rather than later but uh obviously you know the most important thing is that everybody's safe and that you know all of us uh, are able to to get through this all together so um that's what i got going on also i've got my uh, my baseball academy that's also on pause as well. And uh, really, you know, that's just a, I always tell these guys, uh, I'm, you know, corporate cruise by day, coach cruise by night. So that's just how it goes. <laughs> and Grit, how are you doing these days? Uh, doing good. Sorry, I got disconnected. Y'all hear me? Yes, yep. sir. Yeah. Yep. So uh, are we giving you an update on life these days is that yeah, what we're doing yes, we were just doing a kind of a roundabout uh what's going on in the grit man family world right now well it's good so raising two kids i got a 12 year old boy 10 year old girl uh beautiful wife right now we are uh dealing with this quarantine situation um i am a partner in a firm called higginbotham so i've been in the insurance business since i got out of baseball do that and then try to play as much golf as possible <laughs> he's, pretty guy, good. he's pretty good he's good just ask guy, him I'm uh, <laughs> staying out of the way but wherever you guys really want to take this I have a few guiding points uh, kind of talking about the streak uh, everything that led up to Omaha obviously <coughs> to uh, Coach Graham a little bit and his uh, sprinkling of kind hearted wisdom in all this um the actual championship series, of course, and a lot of this will center around the final game and, of course, kind of uh, the dog pile and everything around that. So uh, first off, I mean, you guys take this however you want to go, but uh, the streak 
Uh, I've talked to Enrique a lot in other broadcasts, Philip, when you joined us too. But um, in that 30-game win streak, is that when y'all kind of sensed, obviously, the high ranking that uh, this team could be something special? Who's coming with me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 uh, the, the streak was something that was pretty cool just from the standpoint of and having a little bit of a frame of reference now on the college level uh, to get that many guys playing that consistency that consistently for that period of time is uh, is is out of the ordinary and I think it probably was a pretty good indicator that that uh, that something we had, we, something cool was on the horizon so that was a I definitely think that that was it, it was it was it, it was a forecasting what was possible. Like yeah, I, thirty games, yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, I don't maybe like around when we got in the twenties, media or people started talking <laughs> about it. But I guess looking back, thirty games was pretty uh, good. But once it ended, we weren't happy to lose a game. But it was kind of nice to focus on the real prize, which was going to Omaha and winning. Yeah, I don't. You you know when you're in the zone like playing a sport and you're just kind of mind numb. I felt like that's how we were, right? Like you just kind of went out and did your job. You weren't focused on. I I don't even know. I didn't know a streak was going on, but I. But to be honest, I really didn't even know much about baseball and didn't really know where I was half the time. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> just kind of out there. I I thought every team was that good. I hadn't played in three years, so I was like, hey, no errors. Isn't that normal? So, hey, Georgie, um, speaking of that, hey, but I think the good thing about the streak is I finally got my leadoff spot back. I think because we were winning, yeah, they no didn't want to change the line. So he batted me second, but after that, then I got the bat leadoff. So, thanks. Yeah, well, it, it, I also, when I never walked, I think I had like four walks on the season as a leadoff spot. <laughs> I don't think that helps. Walking <laughs> <laughs> at everything. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I don't remember much about the streak either, uh, other than, um, you know, that we were winning. I mean, it was just a – I remember during that time having a conversation with a friend of mine, uh, and it was in sheer conversation that they mentioned, you know what, you guys haven't lost in a long time. Because the conversation always started with, hey, did you guys win today? Did you guys win today? I'm like, yeah, we won. Yeah, we won. Yeah, we won. But it was a scenario where – Later on down the line, it was like, oh, my God. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't even remember how many games at that point we'd won, but that was the first time they hit me like, we got a streak going on here. Um, but then, you know, actually, after doing some research, somebody uh, the other day asked me, hey, did you, have, did you ever play in a game where you guys scored 20-plus runs or more? And I was like, I'm sure. And I, I looked up our 03 year, and, guys, I don't know if you guys noticed, we scored like 20-plus runs like three times that, during that streak. Like it was, or, or at least during that year, I know one of them was against San Jose State, and uh, I can't remember the other two, but I think one of them was against Liberty too. But anyways, but we were crushing folks, and at that point, when I when I look back, I was like, oh, that's right, we're pretty good. Yeah, look, we we get credit for having the best pitching staff ever, and we did four first round draft picks, unbelievable. <laughs> one of them's here, but our batting was not too shabby. I think up and down the lineup, you had nine guys hitting over three hundred. And no errors, like just wild. No one batted like 450 yeah. or anything like that, but just consistent throughout. 100%. Being a pitcher, like, I mean, most of those games, I was sitting in the dugout watching you guys. Um, and the most impressive thing to me was like, like you said, Jeff, we, you guys didn't make mistakes. So, I mean, it gave us a ton of confidence as pitchers. Uh, but like our thing, like you guys probably didn't realize that you were on a 30 game win streak, but. Um, I promise you that we did because nobody wanted to be the guy that went out there and laid an egg. And, ah. uh, so, um, that was kind of the, the feeling from us. Very cool. Pretty wild. And, and then Lamar busts up the streak. Wasn't it Lamar that beat us, guys? Right. And then the Lamar. best part about that that I'll always remember is we went back to Lamar. We were going to get revenge, right? So we threw a weekend <laughs> starter, and I forget who it was, maybe – but we, we threw a weekend starter against them, and they put, like, seven on us in the first inning. Crushed. We could not beat Lamar. <laughs> they were tough, man. They were, they were good. So when did you guys know uh, this could be uh, the real deal, or is that something just kind of numbskulls like me on the outside look? And like Enrique referenced earlier, you don't want to talk about it. You're, uh, you're in the zone, like, like Georgie was saying. Uh, uh, start with you, Philip. Like, 
you're not a position guy like these other ones. So uh, did you have a, a different frame since you're getting the ball once a week? I mean, how was it for you? I mean, I, and the streak was awesome, but I, I really felt like we – going into that year, we, we knew that we had something special already. I mean, the year prior, we had, we'd gone to Omaha and, you know, I think um, we got up there and, and just – we. I mean, a tough loss to Texas. I mean, could have, the game could have gone either way. And I think if it had, we might have had a lot better result that year in Omaha. But um, the way that it ended that year, it, it kind of like everyone had a chip on their shoulder. You could tell, like, coming into the fall, like, I mean, there it was just all business. You know, like, Coach Graham had a lot of, you know, talks with us and things like that. Like, I remember, you know, everybody's got stories about that. But – um, there, he didn't really have to say a whole lot, you know, to that team. There was a lot of, you know, just team leadership and um, guys holding each other accountable. And that's the thing I remember most about that team was uh, everyone knew their job and they did their job. You didn't have to – there was no question whether somebody was going to be prepared or not. And um, I think that's what, you know, kind of led to a, a lot of that success. It was just a consistent mindset, consistent preparation consistent performance, you know, just throughout practice and game, you know, even the season. So that's what I remember. Yeah, I, th I think going to Omaha the previous year was pretty significant from an expectation standpoint. And uh, the uh, even like the 30 game streak deal, that was part of the season, but I think everybody, there's an underlying understanding, like for all intents and purposes, the regular season wasn't what we were playing for anyway. So, and then having so many guys back and obviously there was, it was a pretty complete team. Like we're all kind of alluding to, but it was uh, the, the, the experience from the previous year that the number is talking about was pretty significant. And, and, and yeah, make no mistake about it. <coughs> Coach Graham created an, an environment back then that at least with that team, not maybe not a lot had to be said, but there was a, there was definitely an understanding that um, everybody had a role and, you know, bring what you bring kind of deal. Yeah, and and to piggyback off what you just said, Yanish, I mean it's 100 percent true that that I think that that O2 uh, uh, season to go to Omaha was it was a big one uh, because I just remember, I mean I just remember when we got to Omaha, it was like a whoa we're in Omaha like this is cool Omaha right, and then all of a sudden when we got there in O3, it was like yeah we're here to kick everybody, you know, sorry. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to be PG uh, here, but uh, you know, but for real, like there was a, it was a total mind switch uh, flip of we're not here to just be here. We're here to we're here to win this thing, man. We're, we're here to run the table. So, um, and then, you know, I'm telling you, man, this 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 team was just so complete. I mean, the the three big boys on the mound, man, and you got and then you forget you got Arzma on the back of, of the pan just closing people up. I mean, and, and like how Jorge said earlier, I mean, you know, the fact that the team, as a team, I want to say as a team, we hit like 320, I want to say, as a team. Um, and I don't know if you see that anymore. And I don't know if you could see the spread of the RBIs and the run scores throughout the whole team. I mean, offensively, we were just really complete. And like how Umber said earlier, I mean, when you have a, a team that's together and everybody knows their role and they're not afraid of, hey, uh, you know, if I don't do it, Yash is going to do it or Grip Man's going to do it, et cetera, Jorge, right? whether he's trying or not, you know, he's just going to do it anyways. But, you know, it's just one of those things where when you have complete confidence in the lineup, I mean, championships are made. This is what happens. And, and the chemistry of it all too, guys. I mean, look at me as, as, as even though, even though big man over in the top right corner of my screen has a full on beard and he's awesome and he's in Tyler. I mean, I think about all these guys a lot, man. You know, we, we, you know, it's, it's a great four guys that, uh, that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll forever be together and we'll cherish each other. I mean, I mean, it's it's unbelievable that uh, I got to play with these guys and it's it's awesome. So these are my brothers forever. So it's it's good stuff. Well said, Cruzy. I think one important thing in '03 was when we finally beat Texas because in '02 they had our number and they were defending champs. And so if you want to be the champ, you got to knock them off. I believe it was in March we beat them in extra innings at Reckling, and then. The next day, we got on a plane and flew to Hawaii, so it made that flight a little sweeter. But that was a big moment, I think, for the team to say, yes, we're good, and we just beat the defending champs. This is our year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when you get to Omaha, there's no fear. We're naive enough to think that, you know, to not really appreciate the gravity of the situation, at least I was. 
And also, we beat so many good teams throughout the year that you say, well, this is just another game. Let's go beat them. I think the year before, to everyone's point, you get there 2002, you're kind of, oh, my goodness. Like, we got to play Notre Dame and all these teams. Are they good? Can we beat them? You get there the next year, you're like, oh, we've beaten everybody. There's no problem. Let's just go to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are some uh, conversations that y'all may remember either – like during Omaha, that kind of led up to the final series, obviously that big Texas game that, that set the table. So kind of right up to the brink of that Stanford series. And the, the first time, I think, or the first couple of years that there had been a best of three uh, series. So you're almost there. So kind of round table, what was it like starting that uh, final series? Of course, you split the first two games before uh, winning the landslide in the last game. So kind of pre-Stanford series in the middle of Omaha. Uh, walk us through that, guys. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it was the first year of the three-game series. And after, yes. after winning the first game, we I remember kind of, you know, joking with everybody like, well, this sucks for the last 100 years. We would have been the national champion. <laughs> now, now we got to win another one. But um, it's probably kind of a microcosm of the, the resiliency of that team, though, losing the second game and bouncing back and, and – and, and winning so by by a, by a pretty large margin. So um, I don't know. It's it's weird. I don't know what you guys remember about the 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 games leading up to the Stanford series, but I know the Texas game obviously was significant. But for whatever reason, the only thing I really have much of a recollection of is the Stanford series. I'll tell you what, man. I don't I don't remember much of, of the build up too. I just remember the for I think for me personally uh, it was just. The tunnel vision of it all I, it was a game for game by game as soon as we won that first game it was uh was southwest missouri state was that was that the team guys mm-hmm. so the first team as soon as we beat those guys and we beat a guy a catcher that i ended up playing with his last name was piazza at the time too i mean i was like we're good because i mean it was just baby stuff you had to get that first win and as soon as you got that first win we knew that we we're gonna get after it and like to, to paul's point too i mean i remember you saying that i remember you saying we would have been champs by now but the, the, the funny thing about it is, though, and I know uh, Gritman and everybody here can agree with me, uh, when it's two out of three, we knew we were going to win because I don't believe we lost a series that whole year. So two out of three was nope. death blow for somebody. <clears throat> the pitching staff was too good to take us to two for three, right? One game series different, two for three, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get anybody. 100%. Yeah, I, I remember, you got to remember the Texas wins with Rusty's walk off. That's a great memory. Uh, Kavanaugh scoring. <laughs> I don't. Game one, Stanford. That was that the what was the score? That was that four to three. That's the one where Ace hit the dribbler and the guy threw it away. He right. collided. Ace, yeah. Either that or Ace did his best impersonation of A Rod. <laughs> I don't think Ace knew he won. I think he was like, I just remember him like r- rubbing his nose and like looking funny. Yeah. He was confused, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those, uh, yeah. We, what was it? South it was Missouri. South was Missouri. Then you, Texas, Texas. Was that it? Correct. Mm-hmm. And, now and then I, we, the only reason I remember those games a lot was the only games I got to play in. Um, the one Texas game. The doctor told me I could play in one game in the series. After starting all year, I have to sit on the sidelines of the California series, which is fine because I didn't belong there anyway. But he said, you can play in one game. What do you want to play? I said, I'm going to play Texas. I took off my walking boot, went out there. Rukti, I'm standing on first with a broken foot. And Rukti, I was like, ah, I'm good. It's fine. There's two outs. I'm just going to the dugout. Rukti hits one in the gap. I got to score from first uh, on a broken foot. I think I did permanent damage to myself. I'm still dealing with it today. But that's, oh, that's, why I, that's what I remember from the build-up. I, I remember feeling like I really hope I get another chance to – make a contribution because uh, the second game against Texas, you know, I started the game and I think I hit three batters in a row, got out of that and then walked three batters in a row, got out of that. And then eventually I get taken out like in the fourth inning and um, after like 90 pitches or something like that, we're tied. And, you know, I'm like, you know, second guessing coach Graham, like, what are you doing, man? I got this, you know, like, you know, looking back, like it was like, total disaster circus going on and um you know these guys picked me up and uh you know josh baker came in and and did a great job that game you know he was another guy that 
by the way. Yeah, by the way. Yeah, by the way. And uh, so anyway, I was kind of sitting there hoping, like, not hoping that we would lose one of those games against Stanford, but hoping I would somehow get another chance to, you know, get back out there on the ground. So that was that was rough. Yeah. Well, you did us, you did us well. And you, you did back out. exactly. You did fine. Uh, you know, <laughs> going back to Josh Baker, what also we had this amazing pitching staff, and obviously the big four first round draft picks get a ton of credit, but Josh and the rest yeah. of the staff was exceptional. And people don't realize with twenty seven players or whatever we had like at max capacity we had an all-american pitcher sitting on the bench mm -hmm. with an injury i mean mm -hmm. pretty wild with stephen hurst that's yep. pretty yes. good team my roommate and like even though he wasn't able to pitch that year like the year before he had already like you know established himself like he was i mean he was a dog i mean like the, the year of eight series, I mean, you guys remember those performances, you know, Crowder, and then, you know, unfortunately he got hurt the next year, but he stopped, I felt like he made a great, so many good contributions just through his, like, leadership, you know, because we were still young pitchers, you know, the, the three guys, and then, you know, Arzma, you know, I don't know if anybody can really lead Arzma, but <laughs> uh, Hurst was like, he was definitely, like, still the leader on that pitching staff. Yeah, no doubt. So, so game three gets going. Uh, you're, you're tied in the series 1-1. And <coughs> you get the big first inning, but then you, you get to that 11 nothing lead. So that, that's building. You obviously feel good about your chances. And I know you're not probably talking about it, but talk about that swell first with you, Coach Yanish. Like how – because you and Enrique both had big hits. I know later in the seventh inning, but how that kind of mounted – and a team that was full of swagger anyway, it seemed like uh, that great start really, hey, new, new shock. It was, a, it was the best thing for y'all to have that big, big start. Yeah, you, you're talking about in game three now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that if I, you know, kind of can convey what was going through our heads, I, th I think it was kind of like a, an expectation we were talking about earlier it, it was. It felt like what was supposed to happen. I guess if that's the right way to say it. And it, to me, it, it, you know, going through that game psychologically, it was kind of like, yeah, that's about right. You know, this this is this is where this is kind of where this is supposed to end up. This is how it's supposed to go. So, um, and not to not to discredit the the the, the, the significance of the moment, but I, I I felt like everybody had an an underlying anticipation that we were going to win and now we were winning like that's that's kind of how it went I mean, for, for me i just remember uh i knew that you know obviously umber was on the mound we had a, a a solid guy there and a veteran um but i thought the little the little uh tidbit about their guy their starting pitcher was a freshman man i i knew immediately in my mind i was like if this guy gets through us I mean, he's got to be nervous. There's no shot, man. You know, and then sure enough, in the first inning, he just gave it up. I, I'm sorry if he's watching this. I apologize, but it happened. And, like, I just knew the jitters <laughs> were going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and once we got those three or four runs, I want to say in the first inning, I was like, that's a wrap, kid. You know, so uh, I was just ready and I was happy there. You know, we ended up, you know, trying some of those guys and getting, you know, 11 more runs. And, you know, obviously at the end, we ended up, you know, being those guys 14 to two. But, I mean, if, but I just felt that from the very beginning, you know, we had the advantage that, you know, the left-handed pitching freshman was just not going to beat us. So. I actually ended yeah, up – sorry, I actually ended up uh, rooming with that, that freshman that summer. So there was some – He's uh, a great guy. He's a great guy. He, he's, he's a good guy. But there was some witty banter exchanged based on the way that game went. Oh, this is great. Can we, can we share that off live? <laughs> 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 there were a lot of walk. He walked in a lot of guys, right? He sure did. We yeah. had a lot of walks that first inning. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to say. Uh, yeah, I think he walked in the first run. Right? I mean, um, something like that. I know I two. walked. I think two. There you go. Yeah. Look, I was I was sitting in the dugout because I couldn't play. And after the first inning, I forget who it was. I looked over. I was like, Umber's on the mound. We're up. Whatever it is, nothing. Ball game. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the time, us, us bench warmers were sitting there talking about what are we going to do after the game and who's going to be first in the dog pop. <laughs> I, was, I was certainly happy to do it in the first inning, but I, I was not I wasn't in the same camp as you. I think it was 
it's quite over. I appreciate the confidence, but <laughs> <laughs> I knew that there was a lot of work to do. And um, I guess like in the, what it was like in the sixth inning, you guys like exploded for like seven runs or something. Oh my god! At that point, I kind of kind of relaxed a little bit. And mind you, let's not like I know I know we've all this had had this conversation in the past, fellas, but. Mind you, that Stanford team was a good team, man. It was a very, very good team. I, I'm, you know, I was uh, joking about the, the freshman pitcher and whatnot, but, but that's that team was good. I mean, you, Umber, you had to face Ryan Garko, you had to free, uh, face Jen Lowry, you had uh, what, what was your your what was the guy in the left fielder? He's a he's a he was a beast. Um, Putnam, Putnam, Carlos, uh, Quinn. Putnam. Carlos yeah. Quinton was in right field. Four or five. Uh, guys. And then you, and then and then, and then don't forget the center fielder, man, Sam Fold. Yeah. The squad was low. Oh, yeah. There was like five guys on that Stanford team that played in the big leagues. Yeah, heck yeah, dude. They were good. Yeah, yeah. five fielders, right? Yeah. And uh, to yeah. be honest, I, I got to play with uh, Quentin um, years later, like seven or eight years later. Right. And uh, there was a lot of Woody <laughs> Banner exchange. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Grit you're, Grit, you're playing on one leg, uh, the, the research tells me. And uh, forgive me, I forget when the big catch is. We've talked about it in the broadcast in the past, but kind of a two-parter for you, Grit. What is that like? You're, you're playing on one leg, but you're still making those highlight reel catches that, that fans are watching here in this rebroadcast today. Well, yeah, so game one is when I tore my PCL, and I think it was the first or second inning. There was a ball that was hit down the left field line that I think landed like 10 rows deep. And somehow I thought I was going to go catch it. And so I took off to go get it. And Rosenblatt was one of those old school stadiums that have the bullpen mounds in play or, or not in play, but on the outside the foul line, I guess maybe old parks. I'm not sure. Wrigley maybe still has it, but all the new stadiums put them out of play. Well, I ate it right over a bullpen mound. I remember my, uh, getting up and being like, crap, I just busted my face on ESPN. And so I ran back to my position, and my right knee felt like it was floating. I uh, um, kept playing. They, Dave Key, our trainer, gave me some brace to put on. After the game, Dr. Clanton was like, you tore your PCL, but good news, you really don't need a PCL. And I was like, great. So he goes, if it hurts, just keep playing. You can't hurt it any worse. Uh, so then I, I think the two part where you said about the catch, so that was the eighth inning of that game, game one. And so I'd heard torn a PCL in the second inning, but I just remember, I think Putnam hit it. Uh, Left-hander, so the ball off the bat was slicing away from me, and all I was thinking was I got to catch it. And I guess uh, maybe if I had my good knee, I would have got back out there and camped under it. But since I was a little slower, I had to dive and run into the wall and uh, – People remember it now. And Philip, on your end, uh, any visits with Coach Graham on the mound, or I mean, conversations in the dugout? Is it you're, you're pitching so well in Game Three? Is it kind of leave it alone, or what were those talks like? Or I don't know if there were any visits to the mound. Uh, for a mound visit, I had plenty of mound visits in other games, but not <laughs> that particular game. Um, and usually, if you were you know, as a starting pitcher, if you were, you know, kind of just going along okay, like uh, Coach Graham would not – he didn't do a lot of, you know, conversing in the dugout with the pitchers. Um, he liked for us to kind of stay stay out of the way. Um, and – but the conversation I do remember with him was the, actually the night before the, the championship game. Um, I think because I'd had such a rocky performance uh, in the Texas game uh, when we – you know, got forced into a game three. He called me to, you know, his hotel room that night before and basically um, I think it was just basically evaluating kind of where my head was, like, you know, deciding whether or not, you know, he, he was going to give me the ball. So I don't know what I said to him or, you know, what I did that convinced him that I was going to be all right. But um, somehow I was able to to, to uh, give him confidence enough to, to let me start that game. So I was glad, glad for that. Um, Jordy, first with you, um, and you were 
one for one in your rice seasons, you get the national title. So uh, congrats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pretty good. Classic. But uh, and, and go around the horn if y'all don't mind, but just how has the win impacted uh, your life today? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's created a bond with this team that I think is enduring and will last forever. I mean, you always have that with college teammates, um, whatever sport. Um, but I think it strengthens that bond because they did have something so special. Um, and, and for real, it, it actually, early on in your career, when you're out looking for jobs and when you're out interviewing, you're applying to law school, which is what I did. Look, it's a, it's a talking point. It matters, you know? I mean, it, it goes into your career to say, I wasn't just, didn't just play college sports. You know, I've got this, you know, ability to juggle a lot of things and work hard. But also, we've got a good talking point, a way to open a door, a conversation, part of a winning team, part of something special for the city of Houston. Um, so I think it's changed my life in, in many ways. Um, and again, I, I just randomly showed up. I don't think I deserved all the ways it's changed my life and, and been such a big <laughs> been such a big beneficiary of it. Happened to decide to play baseball at the right year and let these guys take the championship um, and, and ride along their coattails. But um, it's been tremendously impactful and, and certainly fun, but most importantly, created a bond with these guys that'll last uh, forever. In fact, Yanish still comes to my house three times a week to work out when we're not in quarantine. Yep. Cruz comes like once a year and then you know, says he's going to show up and doesn't quite make it. But, you know, we still, we're all still in touch. I try. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. <laughs> you showed up twice. Um, the, I showed up for a full week. <laughs> the JP, to answer your question, going to Omaha and win that championship 100% changed my life forever. So I'll give you a couple examples. My wife was watching on TV, and although when I reconnected with her after, her only comment was, wow, you look bigger on TV. And I had known my wife from high school. We weren't dating at the time, but then reconnected. And uh, so I credit the fact that she saw me on TV for us getting back together, eventually became my wife. Second, my first job I got was a guy that played at Texas, Doug Hodo. I'm real, feeling real old now because his son's not playing at Texas. But he watched us play and watched us beat Texas, and he liked the way I play. He's a gritty, so he's a gritty player, hard nose, and so he offered me my first job. So I got a wife and a job, and I mean, going forward, I mean, I guess winners win. People like to be associated with winners. It's just getting a taste of winning just makes you want to keep doing it in life. And all my teammates, I can see they've carried it forward. There's just a difference between different groups of friends and my college teammates are successful in life. And I got to believe that one national championship has something to do with that. Enrique, how about you? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, I, I, to piggyback off of uh, both Jeff and Grit, I mean, <clears throat> seriously, like, uh, you know, how, how Jeff mentioned, it's definitely a, a, a bond that I will forever have with these guys. I mean, this is something that we'll cherish forever. And, and it's, it's very unique. I mean, and then to really to really think about it and, and to focus on the fact that we're really the only Rice University baseball championship club right now. You know, I thought that when we left that we would have at least won it one more time. You know, we had such a good squad after we left that uh, I thought there was opportunities for at least one more championship. But, you know, uh, definitely uh, these are – it's changed my life in the sense where I got – you know, these are lifelong friends, you know, uh, these are great conversations where we'll, we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll share stories that only us knows, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we, we, nobody from the outside really understands or gets. It's, it's an exclusive club. I mean, and even, and even the, uh, the older Rice alumni and Rice baseball players uh, will understand some of it, but they don't understand to the extent of what the success that we landed with in Rice um, and uh, to taste that championship, right? Uh, on, on, on the life perspective, I mean, definitely, like to pick it back what Gritman said, you know, it's a scenario where, you know, people like to be associated with winners. I mean, I, I don't, when I walk around uh, the stadium and whatnot, I mean, I've been with the Astros for five years, you know, people will say it for me, hey, this guy's a national champion. And I'm like, yeah, 03, you know, but I don't really talk about it. But then when we start talking about it, it you know, it, it, it's definitely a great conversation piece. And it's something where, 
you know, you get to share the experiences that, that only a few have even experienced. So it's definitely uh, unique and it's definitely priceless. So um, definitely blessed to, 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 to you know, taking part in that and, you know, not only to win a championship, but to play in two College World Series, that was a dream come true. As I, I always, as a young kid, wanted to play in the World Series and, uh, and that was awesome. So, and to, to do battle with these guys, I mean, shoot, uh, hey, blessed, man, blessed. Coach Phillip, what do you think? No number. I, uh, I mean, for me, like as far as baseball goes, there's nothing that even comes close to, uh, to that. Not just that, you know, winning that championship, but the whole season and that group of guys. Um, yeah, like I mean, I, that's the one thing. Like, I, I kind of wish I'd be still in Houston. That way, I could see these guys more often. But um, it's like they were saying, like you just you never. Um, you're never going to lose that bond, you know, like, you know, we went through that whole season, you know, it's not just the games though. It's the practices, it's the times away from the field and, and things like that. Um, and no matter what you do afterwards, you know, Giannis, you know, playing the big leagues, like it's not the same. Um, your college teammates, um, you have such more of a plan with them um, than you ever will in professional baseball. Uh, because, you know, guys are moving around and, and you know, everyone's kind of – it's more of an individual type type of a deal, especially in the minor leagues. And um, so, you know, it's it, – nothing really compares to those memories that, that we all have together. And um, you can see it's a fairly big deal to me. So I've <laughs> – I've uh, set aside some 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 space in my home to, uh, to memorize that that day, and, and there's other other pictures hanging up around here too. But um, yeah, so I think about these guys often. Think about the things that we went through, and now that my son is getting old enough to play baseball. Like it's a lot of you know those types of stories and examples that I'll kind of share with him about you know because it wasn't all success. Like we we had to go through some challenges too. So. Um, but it pays off in the end if you if you stick with it. <laughs> there was there was there wasn't any quit in that in that team. Yeah, it, it was such a Rice in general is such a unique place for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the network that, that you established there is is unique, especially in and around the Houston area, but Texas in general, I guess. Um, I haven't gone into the I haven't gotten my way out of baseball yet, <laughs> so I'm still still in the game. I haven't benefited maybe as much uh, professionally as some of these guys have from telling those stories, but um, I do still get to interact with a lot of our alumni, probably much more so than a lot of these guys. And um, I personally selfishly think that that's why having the opportunity to have accomplished it at a place like Rice, it's, you know, winning a national championship is, is a tremendous feat for anybody that does it anywhere in university, regardless of resources. Um, the fact that we did it at Rice is, is, it, it is what it is. It's a very unique thing. And I, I think that everybody benefits in different ways from, from whether it was a job and in some cases, wives. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I think that it, I think it's something that and to, to Umber's point about the professional side, I tell our guys all the time, like, fortunately I was able to play for a little while and play in the big leagues a little bit. And there it's not, it, it's not close. Like, I mean, in terms of the baseball experience, the best time I had was in college and granted we can all everything we're talking about our college baseball experience was 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 special you know there's no two ways about it but it's not close I mean that that was the best baseball experience that we that we experienced and a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are still very close and you know geographically a lot of us still live in in close enough where we get to see each other from time to time and uh it's um it, it, I think it it's safe to say that it impacted all of our lives in, in a pretty cool way. Hey, JP, hold on. Hold on. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but, but Giannis, uh, that just goes back to the whole thing about, you know, teams that have team chemistry and the teams that, that know each other's roles and, and they're not afraid to do it, right, and battle it out. I mean, they, it's, it, it, it creates such a unique bond. I mean, we could have easily won a championship, gone players to pro ball, done some professional stuff, and just not even talked to each other. That could have easily happened. But I'm telling you, the fact that we actually liked each other, the actual chemistry was there. And obviously, you know, when winning cures everything, you know, you had that awesome mix. And, you know, you get it, like I said, you get a fraternity and a brotherhood that, you know, hey, we'll, we'll be here for life, man. I hope that, you know, anything, 
if these guys, if, if there's anything they need, they know they can call any of one of us and we'll help them out. So, I mean, uh, so hopefully, um, you know, I'm pretty sure the feeling is mutual for everybody. So it's just one of those things where, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just awesome, man. It's, it's, it's a feeling like no other. One thing I like uh, everybody to comment on, except Grit, because it's about him. Heck, we'll give him his, his word. <laughs> there was a glaring omission I was digging up and sold, obviously. Uh, behind the scenes, feed me with a lot of nuggets and stats. But Grit had this amazing series, but in my term, again, pre-broadcasting days, but seemed like he was robbed of the most outstanding player awards. So, I mean, <laughs> big deal now, and any sore feelings, what do the rest of y'all think about <laughs> I, can assure you, I can assure you Chris hasn't gotten over it, but, <laughs> um, I, you know, commenting on, on that, that side of things, though, you know, it's hard to argue with the fact that somebody from the winning team didn't, didn't get the MVP, regardless of who it was. Um, it, uh, we had a little texturing going on. Stanford, I think played eight games in, the, in Omaha that year. We only played six just due to efficiency with the uh, the first few games. So they had guys that had the opportunity to, you know, put up more numbers, I guess, if that's the way you want to say it. But but uh, philosophically, I think the MVP probably should have come from the from the actual winning team. If that, that, that seems to make sense. Grit, something tells me you have an opinion on this. I agree with the honest. I mean, I, so I've never said this. I don't know if I've ever told you all this. But so after the game, we dogpile, and I'm on the headset with Paday, I guess, on the k True, the Rice Radio. And he cuts the interview short and says, hey, I got to let you go so you can go get your MVP trophy. And didn't get it. But at that time, I'm still – Despite what Yanish says, I don't lose sleep over not getting the MVP trophy, okay? <laughs> My life has turned out fine. <laughs> but I do have a problem with somebody on the losing team getting the most valuable yeah. player because clearly they weren't valuable enough or their team would have won. And second, I don't think a starting pitcher should get a most valuable player award because he played in one of the three games. So what was he doing in game one when we won? Nothing. He was sitting on the bench. What was he doing in game three when we won? Nothing. So I'm not sure who votes on that, but those are my opinions. But I would say anybody that wore a Rice jersey or cheered for Rice or Dave Key and Brooke that, that took care of us, Kim, our coaches, anybody was more valuable um, than the guy on Stanford's team because we were winners and they were losers. <laughs> <laughs> Blood. All right, so uh, they wanted me to ask about the dog pile, and more appropriately with uh, Philip, the, the great pick in the background. And I walked by that, that blown up poster uh, many times in the front office, but <clears throat> I wanted you to kind of do some, uh, I guess, retroactive play by play. Uh, talk about <coughs> Each of y'all, like, approaching the dog pile. Um, Philip gets the final out, so we obviously know where he was. But just um, give us your positioning on the dog pile and just uh, what's going through your mind there from all angles. So I, I told y'all I was on the field. I was in the bench planning this the whole time. And I made the biggest mistake, and it's one of my only regrets from that season. And that is I'm wearing a walking boot, okay? And I thought I was pretty fast. I'm wearing a walking boot, and I told everyone that even with my walking boot, I could beat them to the dog pile. Well, I, I did, and I'm forever not in any pictures because I was on the ground, I was the first layer, <laughs> and I'm stuck. And I'm in none of the pictures because of it. If anyone's watching or listening, and they have the ability to be in a dog pile later, the gift, the blessing to be in the dog pile later, just take your time. Go jump on the top. Be the guy in the pick. Don't be on the bottom. It's kind of claustrophobic. <laughs> uh, yeah i was i was in uh close enough proximity i guess I, you know some of the initial pictures prior to the dog pile umber and i i think umber's actually i think i jumped into his arm i think he's holding me up um but i'm on the bottom of the dog pile too fortunately jory i managed to, to be on the uh on the camera side of the dog pile so I, i'm actually 
you can you can see me in those in those photos, but it was a uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. I remember throwing the glove up in the air and um, and and rushing in and, and just uh, I don't know, man. You talk about a you know a dramatic uh, dramatic event, something that like a lot of emotion was wrapped up in. That was uh, that was kind of the epitome of that. I imagine all of y'all were on the bottom. Just, I mean, I, I followed Jorgie's advice and took my time and jumped on top. Hey, hey if you, Umber, if you look to the, if you look behind you, I want to say Did you that, really, that, you not jump that's cold course right behind me. Yeah. yeah. He's like Superman. Like, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I'll tell you what, man, I remember, I just remember, um, I remember, Raining, obviously, to the front, you know, first base side of cover, just in case you know some crazy crap happened. But uh, this auto, this autopilot, right? But I remember as soon as it was hit to Stansbury, I was like, "Oh, this is good," and I'm just hauling, I'm hauling, and I see that ball, you know, get caught by Sinisi, and I didn't know what to do, so I just jumped straight up. You know, I almost, I think I could have easily jumped like a jump box, like a 40-inch box or whatever. I was up there, man, and then just at that point, I think Sinisi and I hugged. And we just ran to the dog pile. And I just knew that the one thing in my mind was, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt, man. And the next thing you know, people are jumping. And I think in that picture behind you, Umber, I think someone jumped in and smoked my hat and spun it off like that. And, and next thing you know, we're like just, you know, hooting and hollering, man. It, just, it, was, it was on at that point. By the way, I'm moving around because I'm, I'm in Wrigley Field now. We, yeah, Cruz, you are all over the place, man. Dude, my wife just came out the door and was like, shut up, our son's napping. Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I, I know you guys, like, it was because the, the score was so lopsided, like, we actually had a little bit of time to, like, kind of consider, like, how this is going to go. You know, like, mm. you know, we're, about to, we're about to win this thing. What are we going to do? Or at least I did. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to strike this guy out, and then Rukti's going to, you know, come out here and jump <laughs> ground ball to third base is about the most awkward way you can end uh, because he's got to run he's got to back up first so I throw the pitch off the Stansbury and I'm like where do I go like you know Giannis is in Stansbury's you know and, and uh, so I just kind of felt a little bit lost out there and, and uh, for a little bit and then all of a sudden the Georgia and everybody from the dugout comes and just knocks us all down and uh, fortunately, Neiman was able to pull me pull me out from under everybody, but um, it was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that was good stuff. Man. And uh, the aftermath, um, what was the, I mean, obviously you talk about still living with those fond memories to this day, but the parade and then going to the White House, uh, what, what stands out? I mean, obviously do not enough you win a national title but uh, you have the parade and you have uh the honor of i guess that would be uh, w43 that time just mm -hmm. uh kind of walk us through that for lack of a better term man a total blur, First of all, right do y'all remember like a lot of the specifics on that stuff uh, to me it's a total blur except for one thing george bush W put his hand out to shake mine, and I quick gripped him and like crushed his fingers. Like I didn't get into the palm. <laughs> My worst handshake I've ever given anybody. That's the only thing I remember. The rest was just a fun blur uh, with good buddies. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I remember. I uh, the biggest thing I remember. I was in Puerto Rico. I, I flew in from Puerto Rico, and got there. And I'm, I think this is like the first time I'd ever been to the Washington D.C. I think and. And I just remember, like you said, it was a little bit of a blur, but I remember we went through a lot of security. That was the biggest thing that stood. I went through a lot of security. And then we were in the big room. We took the photo with, you know, with W, with George W43. And I just remember being in there and being like, he mentioned about, you know, being from Texas and he was all fired up about it. But I remember he made one joke. I think, I think either to, to Hearst or to Gripman or somebody. I just remember it just seeing him in there and being in that room was just like surreal. I was like, wow, we're in the White House, man. That's pretty cool. But, but it was just, it's, all the minor little details are, are still kind of a, they're still a blur because it just happens so fast. I remember being real nervous because we had a jersey for President Bush to sign, and I don't know if I volunteered or coach told me to ask him, but I remember having to say, "Mr. President, will you sign our jersey?" And they took me a couple of tries to get it out of my mouth, but 
he was he was very nice and gracious. He liked us. I think he's a baseball fan. I guess he had some uh, affiliation with the Rangers at some point. Mm -hmm. there, there you are, good man. Yeah. Look at you. Right well, well, Mr. President, will, right will you sign our jersey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I think, see, and, and so since Georgie was giving out tips to people, I'm going to give it to like, so all the kids out there that have to sit on the front row in the Little League picture or, like, on their knee and it stinks, well, being short paid off there because I got to be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, Philip, Paul, what do you remember? Sorry, Coach. Uh, it slipped. Uh, what do you remember <laughs> about the, uh, the aftermath in uh, the parade, the White House visit, the just, I mean – um, you got pro ball eventually after that, uh, sometime, but just, uh, in another season, but just, uh, what do you guys recollect about that, Paul? Coach? They kind of touched on the White House experience. That was pretty cool, obviously. And, in, 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 you know, in, in the ensuing trips to Washington, when I had some opportunities to go to the White House, I, I kind of remember always jokingly saying, oh, it's a big daughter to be there kind of thing. But, um, with relative to the parade, I think the, the one cool aspect about that was, the uh, I guess the realization of the the emotion and excitement from other people, right? Spans, um, that's something. And, and to be honest with you, like that that has persisted. You know, obviously over the years, mm -hmm. having the opportunity to be the only team to actually kind of accomplish the the, the final goal. But um, that's the that's I have a pretty vivid memory of, of of feeling the emotion from people that were. That, that, that were that were the fans of, of Rice University, whether they were younger or older or our friends at the time, whoever it may have been. That, that's one thing that kind of stuck with me. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? Yeah, so, to piggyback, pick, yeah sorry, sorry, real quick, Jorge, to piggyback off of Giannis, now after talking about it, the flashback that I get, it was really, really impactful to me that I felt the love, that I felt all of us felt the love from Rice University was when we landed back from Omaha yes. and we rode back to Reckling and the crowd, the stadium was packed. I thought that was so cool. Like out of everything that we experienced, I mean, the White House thing was awesome. Don't get me wrong, it was awesome. But to feel the love from our people here was, I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because it was that was really, really cool. I didn't expect that. I don't know if you guys knew coming in. I, I didn't. I just, I just no. thought that was pretty amazing. That was pretty amazing. That's what, I, that's what I was gonna say. That was the coolest moment. Is driving mm -hmm. in on that bus. Lights were out, and the yep. whole thing was packed. The mayor was there. That's when you felt the love. Because you're in this little bubble. You're just playing games yeah. with your buddies. You're protected. You're talking to some fans here and there. And then you come out, you come back home, and you go, oh, my gosh, this is a big yep. deal. You know, that was cool. 100%. That was a really cool moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. The, getting, home, getting back to Reckling and, and seeing all those, those fans there um, was, was pretty surreal. And then um, – the other thing I remember is going to the Astros game and they had us in the, you know, like we're riding around on the mm -hmm. track. fire truck or whatever. <laughs> um, that was pretty crazy too. Um, I didn't actually get to go to the parade though. Um, Cause I had a, I don't know if you guys can I'd be able to read that, but my hometown of Carthage, Texas had Philip Umber day. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Sometimes you have to uh, uh, yeah, that's priorities, you know. So I got, I got to, I got to get it up for the hometown. So I wouldn't have to parade, but I'm sure it was a good time, you know. But probably not quite as big as what we had in Carthage. Absolutely, not. <laughs> <laughs> the big city of Carthage, Texas. Former, uh, former Bulldog legend Philip Umber. Uh, finally, be remiss. I mean, y'all have talked about 37 and Coach Graham a lot, but um, just any contact with him in the last uh, couple years and just any, uh, I mean, memory specific to the title run about coach. And I've talked with coach, obviously a lot about that uh, when he was here, but just uh, what's, what's coach Graham uh, mean to all y'all then and, and what's he mean to y'all now? Well, I'll tell you what, man, for me, uh, coach Graham, I think honestly, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in the trenches with coach as a young player, you know, uh, I'm assuming the pitcher is the same thing, Philip. Like how you mentioned earlier, everybody had those meetings with Coach Graham, those one-on-ones, right, that, uh, that I'm sure none of us really miss, but they were impactful. Um, because I literally – I literally uh, – I literally remember going through it and thinking to myself, what in the heck, man? You know, what is happening right here? But then as you go about your day and as you go about your, your, your normal grind at the field with, you know, with the team, 
you kind of learn some things. But what I mean by this is that by the time that uh, Philip and I got to be teammates in, in, in Port St. Lucie, which is hilarious, we were out there, buddy. Uh, I remember that if I got through Coach Graham, I can go through anything, okay? Because Coach Graham will push buttons. He will he will come at you in some different ways that you will you maybe don't understand at the time, but as you leave and you exit the program and as you got the pro ball, I, I literally left convinced a hundred percent that what I went through made me way stronger. And I was ready. I was ready to rock and roll. I didn't care. I was ready to rock. I remember I remember uh you know, one of the one of my coaches uh, in pro ball with the Yankees. I remember one of the guys telling me, "Hey, man, you ain't scared of him. You ain't scared of him." I'm like, "I went through Coach Graham. This guy didn't scare me. You kidding me? I'm ready, man. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. Bring it, bring it, dude." So that's the biggest thing. So I, I definitely am thankful for 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 going through that with him because uh, it definitely made me mentally stronger. So I, for for sure, a hundred percent. And it, I, I'll always have tons of respect for Coach Graham and 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 what he did and and his his resume is. You know, hey, it's unmatched, man. You, you, you gotta, you gotta give kudos to, to to what he's done in this in his baseball career. I mean, he's 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 a he's a coaching hall of famer, man. I mean, you know, he's he's the man. So, Coach Graham, hey, you know, tough, tough, tough love, but got the job done. So, yeah, for me, I mean, no other. I had he was a unique coach, right? And he saw talent and and interesting spots. That's why you can take a school uh, like Rice and do what he did with the program. And uh, I don't think any other D1 coach in the country, much less the coach of the best team in the country, would have said, hey, there's this kid that hadn't played baseball in three years and all he can do is kind of run. And you know what, I'm going to give him a starting spot in center field. Like that just doesn't happen. So what does he mean to me? I mean, his unique approach to recruiting and to fielding a team and to being open-minded and creative about the way that, um, you know, he went about things was the reason I was able to play. So it means a ton to me. I also think when we talk about being in the zone, Coach Graham did a good job during the 30-game win streak or during the World Series. He never came to the locker room after a win and was like, holy cow, we just beat Texas. Or like, hey, guys, that was 28 in a row. Like, there was none of that that made you kind of pop up and go, oh, wow, what just happened? You come and be like, all right, good win. What's next? Let's go, Let's go business. And probably yell at a few people and then walk away. So he allowed us to stay in the zone to keep performing and to never kind of understand the gravity of our situation because he never made you feel that great about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, Coach Graham's awesome. Love that guy. I mean, run through a wall for him. Still would. So, and you, you did. I, 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 I did, yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't. Wouldn't be where I am. Probably a lot of us would say that if it wasn't for him. One, give me the chance to come to Rice and opportunity to earn a spot on the team. And and he taught us he taught us a lot more than baseball. And, I mean, I, I still apply, use his sayings and apply a lot of the lessons he taught us in life. And now with parenting through business. Coach, hope you're doing good. Hope to, uh, hope to see you soon if you're watching. Yeah, Coach Phillip, I know uh, a misconception I had in the past that he might uh, treat the uh, quote-unquote star players differently, but uh, your impacts with Coach, yeah. <laughs> Enrique has educated me. Uh, Jimmy Baseball's helped too. But uh, How did you guys fall in the, the Coach Graham sphere? I mean, I know it's, it's Captain Obvious, but uh, what, the, what the legend meant to y'all. You want to take it, Yanish? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll close. All right. <laughs> Well, as a, as a pitcher, um, you know, I think probably if I had some more pitchers in here, they would, they would be agreeing with me. But um, felt like Coach Graham almost like uh, just tolerated pitchers for the most part. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, the necessary that we were even around. But uh, at the same time, like, I mean, I've, I've told him this and, and I've told a lot of other people this, like, um, without his – you know, guidance and the way that he, he knew exactly how to, to push everyone's buttons. He didn't treat everybody the same. He treated everybody fairly, but he knew that some guys needed, you know, a, a pat on the back. Some guys needed, a, you know, a kick in the, you know, in the tail. And he knew when to do that, how to do it. And, um, you know, he did a lot of that for me. Um, you're talking about the meetings, like individually, like actually that year when we won the, 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 the national championship, like, 
that whole season, like, I would pitch on Friday night, and then Saturday morning, um, we had a standing appointment in his office. No matter, I might have had a great game the night before, but he would make sure that I knew every mistake I made and the reason that I needed to improve. And, and you know, I didn't like it at the time. Like, I, you know, there was a lot of it that I, I felt like I could have done without. But looking back, like, it was the best thing for me. Um, and I could not, you know, be more thankful that I went to Rice, played with these guys, and played under Coach Graham. Like, it was the best situation. I couldn't have drawn it up any better, you know, for me in my baseball career. And like these guys are saying, like, after baseball, the lessons still apply, you know. And um, so I miss – I am actually miss those meetings, those team meetings. We walk in and – you know, all the chairs are set up around the locker room and you're just hoping you're not the guy that gets the wrath that day, you know. And mm-hmm. But I miss that. You know, I miss that, you know, that, that you're always on edge. You know, you have a leader that's going to hold you accountable. And, um, you know, you kind of get in the business world and you know, it's funny, like, you, you'll get around people and you guys can all relate to this. And like, man, this is just so hard. This is, you know, this, is, this sucks. And you're like, please. It's like, it's, you been through that you can do anything and um so it's it's um it's something i'll always um you know hold hold dear hey Giannis, before you close i just want to say one thing okay i i, I love that philip is saying this because it, it it brings me great joy that uh philip uh, the, you know the man from carthage uh went to rice because he was actually my recruit and i love the fact that uh he was like a poker player, man. When I dropped him off at the hotel, I couldn't tell if he was in or out, man. But it was great to find out that he joined <laughs> up and we won a national championship together. So I just – I love that, brother. <laughs> yeah, so I have a unique kind of perspective probably because I had the opportunity to play for Coach and then worked with him or for him, under him. Um, as a player, I, I think that none of us really knew what was going on at the time. We weren't supposed to, right? We were, we were just we were showing up and, and doing our deal. Little did we know how, how significantly he was influencing everybody individually. Most of the people that I talk to even still comment that the, the, the common denominator is that the, the, the realization comes later, right? When people are doing whatever they're doing for a living or playing later or whatever is, is how significantly he impacted them in different ways. Um, I, if I was going to say that Coach Graham's at least in my opinion, from what I got to had the opportunity to see, his his best skill was was the ability, and I don't know how he did it, man, but his ability, kind of to what Umber was talking about, to evaluate people individually, and and know what buttons to push, and what that translates into is getting the most out of every everybody on the team, whether it was the starting center fielder or the starting pitcher or the catcher, whoever it may be. He had this like just uncanny ability to evaluate people. And and, and 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 thus motivate people. And so obviously, I, a phrase I like to use a lot of times is, is, is it doesn't happen on accident. Like for Rice to accomplish that in that year, that that doesn't happen on accident, and it doesn't happen without him. You know, we all tell the jo- the, the stories jokingly, and some people will, you know, the, the stories that get get told are the the ones that are have the effect for for, for the dramatic. And obviously, he's hard on a lot of people, but. I mean, the results are what they were. And, and and having the opportunity to coach with them, you talk about one-on-one meetings. I had a lot more to coach with them than I did as a player. And uh, it's um, it goes back to kind of what Jorgensen was alluding to. His, his, ex- his expectations were very clear. And whether or not they were always said out loud, he, he conveyed a, uh, a presence that was, that was unique. Even over the course of my career, having the opportunity to play for a little while, he, um, it was a very unique presence that he presented it, but make no mistake about it, everybody in that locker room felt it, right? Um, and, and to go back to it again, it didn't happen on accident. Like, obviously, we had a lot of good players. There's no, I mean, there's like five guys drafting the top two rounds on, on, on that team. Like, that's, that's unique, right? But um, it, uh, it didn't happen without him. And in the ensuing years, obviously, the, you know, Rice became what it was, and it was a little bit easier to, on the recruiting side, I'm sure, but um, it, 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 it didn't happen without coach. I mean, it, he was, he was what put us on the map. Grit Jorgensen, any, any final words, any y'all, any, any parting words of wisdom as the uh, fans, you're going to watch the game, the rebroadcast, I guess. I mean, when's the last time y'all watched this? I've never seen it. I've, I've never seen it. Me neither. So I'm going to watch it for the I've first time with my game. kids. Yeah. 
So yeah, definitely gonna watch. Thing. I'm looking forward to it. Like, it's I've penciled never, in my Saturday night, baby. On. It's it's my Saturday, baby. <laughs> hey, Yanni, let's go get another, watch, let's watch let's go get another Thursday. national championship. Hey, dude, working on it. Working on it. All right. <laughs> hey, one thing, uh, teammates watching this, if anybody knows the bar we went to in the after party somewhere in oh, downtown no. Omaha in an office yeah. building, email me, gritman7 at gmail. We're going to book it in 2023 for a reunion party. But I, it was the best party I've ever been to. Coolest place, but I don't know where it was. Yeah. yeah. Top floor or something, right? Top yeah, floor. top floor. Some top floor. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, it seemed like it was a. It seems like a like, like it was an, like an office building. It didn't seem like a hotel, but top floor is where we were. Yeah, I think with the rice connections, we can track that down. Great, right? we can we can get that. Done. That'd be great. Hey, you guys are welcome. Except coach, I guess uh, you guys are welcome in the booth anytime, if and when we have uh, baseball again. <laughs> Can't wait. But uh, y'all are the best. Uh, appreciate you all for for sitting down, and uh, we'll see you at the game hopefully. But uh, thank you all for everything. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks JP. JP. Good to see everybody. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. You guys stay safe out there, guys.